Welcome back to Dan the Flavor Guy. Today, we're gonna to be making a fajita pin roll. Fajita pin rolls are just like what you'd get at the grocery store. It's meat, lettuce, cheese, whatever they wrap up in a tortilla. But we're gonna add a twist to it. Stay tuned and you'll see what it is. It is dantastic, it is amazing, and it is delicious. Here we go. All right, first things first, we're gonna get an onion the size of a baseball. We're gonna get some bell peppers, whatever color you like, whatever flavor. The reds are always a little bit sweeter. We're gonna chop these up. You can keep these long skinny strips like you'd find in a fajita, or you can chop them up whatever size. My family prefers to have it diced up. So that's what we're gonna do. So while I was chopping up the bell peppers, I went ahead and started sauteing the onions and the garlic. They're almost done. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the heat that you have it on. The higher the heat you have, you wanna make sure you're mixing it well. You wanna get that to that translucent brownish color of the onions, because it brings out the sweetness. Along with the bell peppers, we're gonna go ahead and throw those in here in a minute. We're gonna saute, saute those up too, get them nice and soft. Then we're gonna add our chicken. All right, as for our chicken, there's two different ways you can go. You can buy the pre-bagged, pre-cooked, fajita style, or the regular chicken, it doesn't matter. It's already pre-cooked and grilled. Or you can go another route, which is just a rotisserie chicken, and you can go ahead and chop it up, shred it up, and use it as well. I'm gonna go ahead, add the chicken after the bell peppers are sauteed. I'm gonna bring the camera over so you can see what's going on over there. And then we're also gonna add a fajita seasoning to it to get just that much more flavor because sometimes these pre-bagged fajita the flavor's not there just smells amazing um, once i get this chicken chopped up i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add the fajita seasoning. You can use whatever fajita seasoning you like, or you can make your own. Typically, I make my own spices. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. I do have a spice line that's going to be releasing, hopefully, within the next few months. Uh, definitely want to get on board some of the most amazing spices. I promise you, you will ever taste. So, if I forgot to mention, this is another great dish for barbecues, for family get-togethers, whatever the occasion may be. Heck, Super Bowl is a great way to have this too. So, you need a ceramic cooking dish, small one. The reason why you need one of these, we're gonna make a queso dip in this as we make these pinwheels in the oven. So you need one of these, we're gonna spray the outside of it so the pinwheels don't stick to it. Then a pop apart baking pan is a great thing to have too. You'll see why it's more for display. But you can use a nine by 13 pan, whatever you got, use what you got. There's no point in going and buying something you don't need. You can also use a cast iron pan. Those will work too, set it up, take the whole pan, cast iron pan, stick it in the oven. But if you guys are interested in either one of these, I'll leave a link in the description. You can find them on Amazon if you don't want to go to the store. I've purchased these at Walmart and uh, Fred Meyers carries these dishes if there's a Fred Meyers near you, okay? So let's go ahead and prep this. The easiest way to do it, we're gonna spray the pan, like I said before, any cooking spray you want. If you don't have cooking spray, use butter. Just make sure you're generous with it. Reason being is we don't want the cheese to stick. We're gonna set that right in the center. We're gonna build the pinwheels around it. I'm gonna come in, zoom in close so you can see it once we get it all built. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take this now that it's all sprayed, we're gonna load it with cheese, and then we're gonna set it aside. Doesn't matter what brand of cheese you go with, whatever you enjoy, by all means, use that brand. Because what's gonna happen is we're gonna use this as our base. Build the pinwheels, we're gonna drop them in around here. That cheese is gonna basically seal that end of the pinwheel, so when you guys break these off, it doesn't fall out the bottom. It's kind of cool. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add a little bit of shredded cheese into the center. And then here's the, so Velveeta usually makes a big brick of their soft cheese. 
They also make them in small packages like this, so you don't need a big brick and you don't have to waste it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop this in the center. The next thing you wanna do to make this queso is add your favorite hot sauce, whatever hot sauce you want. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tear this little brick up into smaller pieces just so it melts a little bit better. As the fajita pinwheels bake, so will the cheese. It'll get nice and saucy, saucy. And it'll be a delicious dip in the end. You can add uh, any type of meat if you want to add meat to this. It's just a small dish, so adding all that is gonna be cumbersome trying to fit it all in that little pot. So we're gonna start building the fajita pinwheels now. All right, so you wanna get burrito size um, tortillas, or you also wanna get the big wraps, like you can get wraps that you make sandwiches out of. Either one will work great. All right, so the fajita mix is done. It smells delicious. I love the smell of cooked bell peppers, onions, garlic, the chicken, looks amazing. You get your tortilla. You wanna use a burrito size shell. If you can find them, it's even better. You wanna get the burrito wraps. So they're about, I don't know, a good four or five inches bigger. So first thing we do, we grab a scoop of our fajita mix. We're gonna go ahead, kind of spread that out. We're gonna take cheese and we're gonna load it on the opposite side. You might be wondering, well, why are we doing that? I'm gonna show you. Because of the way we wrap this, the cheese is gonna melt and it's actually gonna seal the burrito shell so nothing will squirt out the sides. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna wrap in, pretty simple. Wrap all the way around, there you go. We're gonna cut the end like so. Keep it wrapped nice and tight. And we're gonna drop it into our pan. Okay. And we're just gonna repeat the process. Okay. It ends kinda, ends, kinda ends up looking like burrito sushi in a sense. It's pretty cool. Okay, again, make sure it stays. That gives you an idea of what it looks like. I'll zoom in, okay? And we just keep building. So on and so forth, till we get this packed. I'm not gonna bore you with all this. Once I get it all set up, I'll come back, show you what it looks like finished before we put it in the oven. All right, so we're all finished. As you can see, it's all set up. We got the queso cheese in the middle. As you're cutting these, you wanna cut them about two to three inches long. And you always wanna make sure that when you wrap it, the little flap, you're gonna to have to push against the side, or you're gonna to have to push it against the center where the queso dish is, and you just kinda of have to build it and form it. You will find out that when you get close to the ends, where the ends of the burrito shell, after you wrap it, you'll notice that stuff wants to squirt out the end. Those are a little bit tougher to work with, but that's okay. Just keep fitting and forming, and you'll get it all done. If you love extra cheese, by all means, you can sprinkle more cheese at the top, but we're gonna pop this in the oven, but before we do that, we're gonna add some hot sauce. When it's all done, we'll pop the pan apart and you'll see what I'm talking about when we use these spring form pans. All right, so it's all done. We're gonna pull it out of the oven. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So you wanna definitely make sure you don't burn yourself. Get some good pot holders. So what it looks like right there, it looks delicious. You got the queso, the hot sauce. You got your pin, your fajita pinwheels. Let's mix this queso up a little bit. All right, so we're back. It's cooled off to the point to where we can now pop this pan open. Pretty simple. Pops off just like that. And now you have a nice little display. Let's go ahead and dig in and try one. All right, nice and gooey. <laughs> Dip a little bit of cheese and here we go. If you love fajitas, you're gonna love this dish. 
Before you guys take off, if you can go ahead and hit that like, hit that subscribe, helps me out, helps me out tremendously. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.